gorgeous. Give it up one more time for Bai Ling. Looking as gorgeous as ever. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling fantastic. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. There we are. I'm feeling fantastic, a little bit cold. I was in Los Angeles, it was so hot, like 100 degrees. When I come here, I was walking around. I actually, I love Belfast the first time. It was so beautiful, the town. Yesterday, I went around, and people are very friendly. They said it's very safe. I walk around by myself. Yes. I love to do that and explore. Now, you go to Comic Cons all over the place. Do you actually make time to see the city if you can and soak up some of the culture? Yes, I, I think one of the uh, great uh, reasons, and I really appreciate you invite me, I was in Manchester with them, yes. is to get to meet all of you. You know, this moment is ours because I fly all the way to meet all of you. I think it's very special. And uh, I would like to share some like a life experience, a joy with you, and also to see part of the culture. And I see when I, was, I went to the big rock, all of that was on the bus. The cow, I see cows and sheep, all of that. And they're so comfortable, and the green was so clean, peaceful. I think they're having a great time. Somehow in LA, all of that, it's not like that, kind of polluted. And they call, I never see they're so peaceful, so many of them. I say, wow, they live a great life. And also, I think that for cows and sheep, they just eat grass, how easy life is, right? You can find grass anywhere. So that's a part of, a, I think, a, even a cow probably, or people not appreciate, you have great life here, it's safe. In Los Angeles, it's not that safe. Yes. So I was terrified going out myself, driving late. But like here, they say, you can go out yourself. I think, uh, I could live here, actually. Yes. Let's both move here. You guys know how to party. Belfast is beautiful, beautiful, and there's something really magical about Belfast and the greenery and the history. Um, but now that you've been here for a solid day, you were part of the Comic-Con yesterday as well, what has the fan interaction been like? How are the fans here in Belfast? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I had one fan who flew, flew here. Then there's no transportation. He walked an hour and a half. I was like, yesterday, I was like, you kidding me? And he have like big back. I said, you kidding me? I so appreciate that. He said, I just come to see you. I said, oh, hour and a half. That's some dedication. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it because uh, I'm not from this culture, this country. Like a lot of your celebrities, I, I don't know who they are. Yeah. So I don't watch TV. I like real life. I like to, because as a performer, you have to basically your experience from real life to interact with people. Like yesterday I was walking, the street have umbrellas. It's in seven days rain, something. I meet this guy, everybody want to buy me a drink. There's a three ladies, they're older ladies, they're drinking. I see you dance, I buy you a drink. They're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so people are so friendly, I meet. But I don't know the strangers, if I get drunk, I don't even know how to get home. I was like, I had a little sip or something. Yeah, a little drink can turn into five. Yeah, the way that we do things here at Comic-Con for sure. Well, we had a great conversation last time I saw you at Monopoly events. And I have to ask you again, for those that might have missed it, about your style and your fashion. You're known for your amazing outfits. And you were discussing to me about how it really lifts your mood. Um, I think of fashion, because uh, I grew up in mainland China, communist country. We don't know brand. Like at that time, if we have a one nice jacket, Everybody buy, we see like 16 girls wearing the same thing. We, we don't have that, I'm lucky in that way because I'm not a slave to the label. Like it take me long, first time I, I did a movie, Red Corner with Richard Gere. If you didn't see, I played the lawyer. So I went to red carpet. I walked by, they're taking pictures. He said, Bailin, what you're wearing? I said, I'm wearing a jacket. And he said, whose jacket? So what are you kidding me, it's my jacket. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I was so offended, he said, whose jacket? I said, what do you mean? Of course it's my jacket. I have no clue what they're asking. They were laughing. It's like the culture take a while for me to learn. I was kind of sad because my English is so poor, I don't understand. You know, oftentimes you feel like sensitive, then because the culture is different. I was share with uh, Michael, Walking Dead. I was like, well, I come to this country, go to party. The man come to me, nice to meet you. I look at him, I follow him. Then he talked to, I'd like to meet you to everyone. I said, how can you do that? But in my culture, that's, if you say that, something very personal. Then they said, um, let's have lunch. I said, when? 
You see, I'll let you know. I said, when? But I literally, I take it seriously, right? But they're just, let's have lunch. Like LA, just lunch means yeah. I see you later. Yeah. I didn't know. They said, I love you. So you love me. You don't know me. They just say I love you to everyone. You know, take me a while to, it's, it's different concept that start to change. And also, I don't know English. I can say, I go to a, a chicken, get a kitchen. You know, mm. kitchen chicken. And uh, at one time, I was all oh, this English. Like a, I was there. Um, people said the man come to me. I said I have boyfriend. Oh, the boyfriend. What do your boyfriend do? I said my boyfriend's computer. I said computer. She goes. I said yeah, computer. I said what the computer? I said a computer, computer music. They were thinking I'm crazy, right? They were like this girl's crazy. I said I love your ass, eyes. I said they love my ass. I said you're American rude, you know. All this I don't know. So finally got home. I said why they're loving computer? It's composer. Oh. I thought my boyfriend computer. Like where they. You think you're dating a computer, an actual computer? No. Yeah. I went to audition like in New York, right? I don't understand, especially number. In Chinese, each zero has a name, like a 100, 1,000, that's another name. I, I don't know how much is 10,000, 100,000, I have no clue. Right? They gave me a number, so I went to audition. This Spanish lady with baby yell at me, cry. I said, I'm auditioning, get out of here. And then my agent said, You didn't go. I went to the wrong place because. Of, just I didn't know the number. Every time I get paid, I say, how many zero? You know, I, I don't know. It's like, and, and also I lived in, uh, near the Columbia University in New York City. When I come here. So I walk by, take subway. The homeless ask me for money. I was looking at the homeless. I said, wow, you have everything I want. Passport, English, right? I have nothing. I don't speak English, I don't have a passport, I don't have money. You ask me for money? So it's like people taking granted, they didn't know what they have. It's whatever, the homeless, it's like what I wanted, why can't he get up and work? So a lot of things are, are, when you're from different culture, you really learn differently. So for me, it's a lot of insight for, I think, because uh, I have a lot of compassion. Like when you don't understand, you become, your senses become sensitive. So you feel things. I think that's very good for artists, actors, and human beings to feel. That's why I don't watch much of TV or movies. Well, well said. And th speaking of things that make you feel, I did not get a chance to ask you last time we spoke about probably my favorite film of yours, which was Anna and the King. And I loved that film. I saw it in the theater, and I was so touched by it. I thought it was just brilliant. Can you talk about your experience on the film? Yeah, Anna King. I think in my life, there's a lot of challenge, uh, sometimes very difficult. Like they cast me for another king, my hair was this long. They said, buddy, you gotta have to shave your hair. I said, you kidding me? In my culture, if you shave, either you're a prisoner or you're a nun, right? There's only two reasons. And, and as an Asian woman, the hair is so important. As a woman, your hair somehow can help you look beautiful. They want me to shave. I said, my, my, uh, my manager, agency, they, they disagree. They don't want me to do. He said, Bai Lin, you have an accent, right? You're bald, you shave your hair. You have all the obstacles against you. How the hell am I going to find your job, right? You have no hair. But I said, I said, you can shave my hair, but you cannot shave off my talent. So I did it. I understand because you can. If I were in the cab, my hair this long would be like so big, right? Doesn't look real because for this character, very beautiful that moment. You have to be real, which I understand. And and somehow when I shave my head, I learned one thing. I think I suggest all the women try once. Then you feel the real nakedness, real vulnerability. Like when I have hair, when I shaved half of it, I ran away because I was just scared. You say, you go ran, but it's half is gone. And when I shaved, I, I went out. The first thing I was thinking, I said, what if something dropped from the sky? I heard first. You never think that way when you have hair. You just become so vulnerable. You're afraid. Then finally I realized the bird, the animal, the butterfly, they're not afraid. So we're safe. And one, I always wearing a cap. So we were shooting in Malaysia with Judy Foster, Jordan Fat. So I went to the mountain. Suddenly the wind blow my hat away. I have no hat. I was like, wow. So there's something I have to face myself to accept yourself. It's not about your hair, all of that. So because that experience, 
I learned so much of empowerment and acceptance. It's not just the appearance, but a lot of beauty, a lot of power, a lot of magic within us. It's not in our looks. So that's something I, I through my experience, I learned about life, learned about myself, learned a lot of wisdom. And also about love, I played the character Topton. She, for love, she would rather refuse the king, king's love, to marry this poor guy, and they executed her. And I think that's a real love. And today's love, unfortunately, I think it becomes a business deal. You know, it's all kind of what I can get, what you can give to me. We lost that purity of how our heart felt. So that's something by playing character, by my experience, I learned the empowerment and appreciate that beauty of love, the real purest spiritual somehow love and power and wisdom. That's what I learned through my experience. Yes, it's a beautiful love story. If you have not seen Anna and the King, do yourself a favor and put it on your list. And of course, an amazing performance by Bai Ling. Now we have Dave over here. We're gonna do this for the first time of the day. He loves this part. Give it up for Dave. Yay. Dave has a microphone. So if you have a question for Bai Ling, just raise your hand. But I have one more question before we get to you guys. But I have some questions in mind to ask for Bai Ling. Yeah, uh, please do. Yes, please. I, would I have all the answer to any question, seriously. Yes. She's here for your pleasure. We are here to talk about whatever you want to talk about, just amongst friends, her amazing career, any questions about acting or the entertainment business, we're here for you. But I would love to talk about another one of my favorites of yours, The Crow. And The Crow is, yes, The Crow is something I watched, uh, you know, as a, I guess, a teen or a preteen. And it was so popular, but then it became this sort of cult phenomenon. And the soundtrack is, I mean, the best ever. It's, to this day, it's really a cult favorite. So tell us about your experience on The Crow. Um, when I did that film, I did not speak English. All I know is like, I come from China, my English is poor. Really, I was like almost like an alien landed. And the, the, every time I talk about the film, I always feel Brandon Lee's presence. And the only thing helped me to cope, to accept, uh, it's a little bit sweet sadness, is that I believe there's no death. I think our body worn out. It's a, it's a house for our spirit to live. So the body wore out, but spirit is still alive because spirit not not measured by time, but by space. I learned the wisdom. I think maybe in human life, because we measure our life by time, therefore there's a death. So everything's sort of like that. So because uh, the uh, also made me um, appreciate the film, no matter what happened to all of us, that moment captured on film will be forever just like that. So that's something magic about film, we can freeze in time, you know, never change. And for him, I know he's very, very proud. So I was, I will share this story, I was like two hours they put us together doing makeup, because I didn't speak English, I couldn't talk to anybody. Finally, he was very slow. He said, finally, I heard you're Chinese. I said, yeah. He said, I'm Chinese. I said, no, no, no way. You're like white boy, right? I said, you're kidding me. He said, yeah, my father's Chinese. I look at him, I said, okay, so what do your father do? He said, my father's a big movie star. I said, well, what's his name? He said, Bruce Lee. I was like, I never heard of him. He was, you never heard of him? I said, yeah, he said, probably one of the few people in the world never heard of me. I said, I really don't know. But I feel bad because I'm Chinese. If I don't know Bruce Lee, it's strange, right? So I called my friend in New York. I said, I'm working with an actor named Bruce Lee. I said, I don't know him. Do you know? They are laughing. They said, it's Li Xiaolong, which is a Chinese name. Of course, I did not know English. So next day I told him, I know your father, Li Xiaolong. He was so proud. So um, then I feel... I'm the only Asian there. I think it probably somehow, somewhere, remind him as his father because we're all from Asia. We don't speak English, and, and we feel this, um, we're different. And he probably have compassion or faith for me. He probably think, oh, this girl doesn't know what, he, what she's getting into. You know, I feel a lot of compassion, a lot of love, a lot of like this gentle caring from him. He's a such kind, hardworking actor. He was only 28. That's why I said, like, after this pandemic, I feel like um, life is so uncertain. You have to do what you love to do. You have to go all the way. So during this time, I made a movie called My Quarantine Romance with Toilet Paper. So I directed, I write, I produce. I just want to do something for myself. 
And my fan was saying, Bai Lin, you don't have a script, you don't have money, how the hell you make movies? Steven Spielberg wouldn't do it. I said, because I'm Bai Lin, because I have universe behind me. So I just, in the post-production, completed a feature film. I financed, I did everything. I think you have to live for your love, regardless. It's not about how other people like it. It's the process you go through. You fulfill something. You give yourself, you experience joy and love, something you totally committed. I think that, for me, is, is worth millions of dollars, all this. So we're too obsessed about money. You work for money. And it's endless. You become like, almost like an addiction. But how, like in my house, the sofa, I never sit there. You don't need a big house, right? I just need a bed. I need that. So if we, I, I think when you own something, they own you too. Your house, you have worries. Like I, until today, I just rent a house. I go, I don't care. If something broken, I call to fix it. I think you can minimize your life, become simpler, then you have so much more free time and joy to really experience life instead of uh, follow society's role to earn this, earn this, earn that. And a lot of girls like are working so many months just to buy that one bag. Also one experience I want to share, I think, I don't know if you, I was in Beverly Hills for a charity event for children. I went there, all these ladies are so expensive, the diamond rings, seven million, I mean, everything's that price. So expensive. I was sitting there. They finally gave me an interview. Say, what do you feel here? I said, I'm sorry. My instinct, I want to say this. Maybe not appropriate, but I'm going to say it. I said, this lady, we're human. You measure yourself by a stone. This is just stone. We give price. But we're so much more precious than a stone. We're alive. Why do you have to use a stone to prove that you're worthy? That's just something I don't understand. So I don't, I never wear jewelry because I lost the one. So I, I, I don't, I feel like a cage. I don't need those things to prove myself. Like you asked about fashion. I dress colorful, I dress whatever I want. And you actually stand out because it's about individuality. It shows your personality, make you feel good. I don't care if it's a trend or something. I dress whatever I like. I love that. Round of applause for that. With all due respect to Oprah's Super Soul Sundays, we're getting Bai Ling's Super Soul Sunday, and we're always so inspired by your story. So thank you for that. If you have a question for Bai Ling, please raise your hand. Don't be shy. This is what happens when it's the first panel. Ask her anything. If not, I have a few more questions myself. I'll ask one more, then we'll go to the crowd. Um, so currently, we have so many people here from different genres. Stranger Things, uh, we've had Cobra Kai before. What sort of TV and films are you into right now? Are you watching a lot of different things? What's a what? Are you watching a lot of different TV shows or movies? What do you enjoy watching? Movies and TV. Oh, I, I have a TV I, just this year. I refuse to have it. Because when you have TV, it's just a two-hour switch channel. I said, waste my time, and you hooked it to it. I said, no, I refuse it. Finally, my friend, I said, I need a huge TV. I got it, but I never watch it. So I, want, I like a movie, the traditional, you're having popcorn, American culture. I enjoy big screen. Yeah. You cannot go out. You, you have to watch it. And the quality, sound, everything's good. You're at home. You're talking on the phone. You're, you're not really enjoying the process of the movie. Yeah. So I think the traditional is still go to the theater to watch a movie. That's what I really, really enjoy. And the American cinema is like huge. I like the popcorn. You're there. It's an event. So uh, I, I, I somehow suggest, I worked with a great director, Terrence Malick. He did a thing rather, one of the best directors. He never gave interview. Uh, he cast me to play on a Broadway show, I play Goddess of Mercy. We only had a, in a band rehearsal. He said, Bailin, you have something very pure, very real, honest. Do not ever watch TV. Keep yourself pure. Because of that, I never watch it because I, I, I know who I am. I'm kind of connected to the universe. Because for TV, of course, it's fun. But if it's too much, you lose yourself. You depend on this program. You lose your life on something. Of course, it's fun. But the real life is much more endearing, much more, a lot of emotion, a lot of beauty that we lost. And also, like I came from China, you write handwriting letter, you send it. I was uh, 14, I was in the People's Liberation Army in Tibet. Can you imagine, I write a letter. Take three months for me to get back later. 
I don't want to cry. Like all our women soldiers there, when one receives the letter, you read to everybody, everybody here, you feel we're connecting with human. But the, how you, the envelope, the stamps, the handwriting, it means so much. Now it's great, but it's too easy, just one message. You don't need to learn the text message is the same. It's convenient, but lost so much beauty because the anticipation, the waiting, there's a lot of romance in it. Now we don't have it too convenient. So I love that traditional reading a book and, and you actually enjoy. It's like you're chewing the food. You enjoy the taste of life instead of just fast food swallow it. Love that. All right, pressure's on, everybody. Any questions for Bai Ling? We've got one. Oh, we've got two. Fabulous. Sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I'm such a fan. I, I loved you in The Crow. I just remember you so vividly in The Crow. Thank and you. in Anna and the King. And you've been in so many things that I absolutely adore, Angel and everything. And your list on IMDb is truly impressive with the Thank number you. of things you've been involved in. So I was just wondering, what was your favorite thing that you were involved in? What was your kind of favorite production? I know obviously The Crow was probably very emotional, but what, what did you love the most? Um, that's a good question. Thank you. Like for me, like uh, filming is like I told you about the Comic Con. It's a life experience. Sometimes I do for the role, sometimes for the location. Sometimes for financial reasons, I do all this because I have to make a living very expensive. So um, mostly, of course, the, fr the Crow is my very first English film in Hollywood, which I did not speak English. Now, another film is uh, Red Corner. I played the opposite, leading lady opposite of Richard Gere. I played a lawyer. I did not speak English. You don't even know how hard for me to learn those lies. I still don't understand repentant attitude. I don't know what does it mean, but I memorize it. That film, I auditioned for three months. In the beginning, if you don't want me, I'm okay. After three months, they audition all the big movies that are in the world, and nobody knows me, and my English was really, really poor. Finally, I got the director to say, you have something that's very, very real. We want that. So after audition three months, I was so terrified because in during this whole time, they're still seeing other actresses. How you feel right today? You're seeing that you just you just put you in the mental state. Man, state of mind is very strange. You finally, the director said, "How do you feel?" I said, "After all this, you can send me to the mental hospital." It's that bad. So after that, so the MGM. I have to meet with the, the head, right? They take me to Bloomingdale, gave me this Armani suit. I said, oh, maybe I can have it. They put all the tag in the back. I have a meeting with the head of studio. Then after that, they return the suit. <laughs> so after studio proof, Richard Gere has to prove because he's a leading man. So at that time, he just on his way to Nepal in Hong Kong. They flew me from Los Angeles to Hong Kong to meet him. I was so terrified because they put me in this luxurious, I said, oh, movies, like this is sweet. Finally, I meet him, he's an even higher sweet. I was waiting when he kept me outside the suite, waiting a long time. You get more and more nervous because in my last chance, if he said no, I'm gone. So I was so nervous. I mean, I almost have a mental breakdown. Finally, he come out. He was like so charming. He said, was that talented, beautiful actress you? I said, pardon me? He just watched the screen test. This is three of us screen tests. My screen test actually made somebody on, on the test of crying because it was very moving. So he just instantly, because he played piano, guitar, and he loved my hometown from Chengdu. He loved Tu Pu Li Bai, the po po poet. Poets? The person write poems. He loved them, so we instantly get bound. He take me to party, all of that. So I was approved, but I didn't know who he was. He said, bye, I take your dinner. I said, no dinner, study, study. So he's all over me because I don't know who he is. I don't care. I just want to do the role. So he told me a story about Julia Robert. He said, at that time, Julia Roberts auditioned for Pretty Woman. Nobody knows her, right? So many pretty girls, Julia Roberts, and it gets so nervous. So she write a note to him, please say yes, please say yes. So he said yes, finally on set. Nobody take pictures with Julia Roberts, all about him. Take a picture with her, she'll be a big movie star. So it's the leading man's power. So we were showing the premiere of Red Corner. So we have screening premiere. After that, somebody told me, Biden, you did a great job. 
I said, thank you. I said, that was Julia Robert sitting behind me. She was so humble, so nice. So I want to say Richard Gere probably don't, he's such a beautiful human being because I'm nobody at that time. He's a huge movie star, but he's a biting, I want you to be good. He's doing everything to help me, so generous. One time the Access Hollywood Entertainment tonight to interview me. I was so shaking, I said, hey, Richard, I can't do it because my English, right? He said, Biden, stop it. They're just interview. you're the leading lady, why you're scared? I said, play role, I'm very confident, but interview me, I'm just terrified. But he stepped on the way, always helped me. And every Christmas, he would send me a photo he took. He's so sweet. So that's my, I would say, one of the great experiences. And also, Luc Besson's Tactic 3, the French movie, uh, most popular. I learned French, just forced myself. I speak perfect French in that movie, play leading lady. I think we can do anything if you put your mind to it. So I did learn French for that movie. So je peux parler français. Love that. Yes, round of applause. Merci. What a great story. <laughs> I love the Richard Gere story. That's fabulous. We had a question right over here. Thank you, sir. Hello, uh, Bailing. I follow you on Twitter and Instagram, and you've worked all over the world. Where's your most favorite place that you've worked before? Uh, favorite place of what? Favorite place you've worked before. Favorite place. I love Paris. You know, I'm romantic. And the Parisian people say, what's romantic? It's raining, it's dirty. But for me, it's like when I grew up in China, always oh, Paris. Some, I love Paris in the winter. So somehow there's a romance by the culture, by just the Eiffel Tower, all of that. So I like Prague. And, and because of the, the culture, the architecture, here, too, I was like taking pictures everywhere. All oh, the churches are just amazing. LA is so boring. There's no culture. You know, I, I, uh, I love London. I love here. I love, in general, I really can live in Europe. And I love Asian, too, the food. I just did a movie in Hong Kong. Like, oh, my God, I quarantined 21 days in Taipei because I got uh, nominated for Best Actress there. And I quarantined another 14 days for the Academy Award in Taipei. I just quarantined seven days in Hong Kong, did a movie. I quarantined all of them. The quarantine actually gets me sick. I was like here like this, right? I'm like finally like going to Asia. They think I'm a disease. They have all this cover. I said, I'm, every day in my hotel room, I have to test if I'm positive or negative. I said, I'm by myself. Why would I do that? In the end, I was so terrified because after then they take you to the hospital. I said, what if I'm positive? They get you a cycle. It's like a, I have a, because in Hong Kong, if you don't have a booster, you cannot go to a restaurant. I have to get booster, all of that. When I got booster, I, I was sick for one week as if like I have a COVID. I said, when I'm not doing this, I'm healthy. It's just this, this COVID thing and terrifies me because I quarantine all of that. I think it's really not healthy. You're by yourself locked in the hotel room. You just have these nightmares. I had the same during COVID. It was just you overthink a lot when you're by yourself. Yeah, yes. And you start to doubt stuff. It's really not healthy. But the one thing's good, I, start, I learned to love myself. You have to. I said, oh, I'm with Bailey. I talk to myself. She's a great lady. I'm talking. I'm with you. It's great. I'm like... A, I take shower for no reason, it's just nothing. Then I start to go online, I do talk to my fans, I meet him boys, all of that. It's just weird thing, because what are you gonna do, right? And they start to deliver me Star Wars, all the food, I say, oh, this is great. Love that. We have time for one more question. Oh, we've got one here. And then, the good news is, she'll be back in the autograph and photo area, so you can meet her in person, and make sure you get those memories via photos and autographs. Oh, hello, just right over here. Thank you. Hi, are you all right? Hey. Um, I, was, I was speaking to you yesterday and just saying that The Crow was uh, one of the most fantastic films ever made. Yeah. I like to collect memorabilia from The Crow, like merchandise and things, and I was wondering if there was anything that you wanted to keep or got to keep from the set of the film? Um, anything that you got to keep from the set of The Crow? Any props or did you take anything with you that you can tell no, us about? I wish, I wish I could have the hat and the costume, because my character looked so special. Yeah. And the, 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 the robe, like the coat. No, none of them. And uh, I wish. <laughs> and 
and also the Wild Wild West. I was kissing Will Smith when that happened, you know, and the dress that made Hannah me so beautiful, but Warner Brother has to keep it. So unfortunately, I didn't. So I want to share, if you yes, don't mind, please. I want to share one story. I don't know if you hear, and just about because I always want to share something like uh, wisdom, or useful in life. Um, if it's yours, it's going to be yours. If it's not yours, no matter what you do, it's not yours. I tell you a little experience how I got Star Wars with George Lucas. I went to the MTV movie award. So after that, I get bored, you know, when the commercial, you just sit there waiting. So I go to uh, get a buff buffet waiting on the line. After like two minutes, I realized George Lucas was in front of me. I said, oh my God. There's no way your agent can have you meeting that. I said, oh my God, George, look, if I was in Star Wars, if I, I, my mind started thinking. I said, after a while, I said, no, no, no. I'm not going to be like any other actor because actor, everybody asks for a job, right? For sure. I said, if I ask a job, he will not even remember. He said, no, I'm not going to ask. I don't know what's in my head. So I did not even say hello. Who? How? Nobody would do that or say hello. If any of my friends, at least you say hello, I didn't. So then I come back sitting in the sofa like this, take my shoe out because I you hurt. I was eating. Finally, this lady come, he said, I love you in Angel, the TV show I did. She said, can I take a selfie, all of that? I said, sure. She said, can I sit here with you? I said, sure. So we're chatting, we're eating. Suddenly I see George Lucas directly walking towards to me. I said, oh, this is impossible. Finally, he walked walk in front of us and this lady get up, he said, bye, Lin. Let me introduce you. This is my dad, George Lucas. That was his daughter, Katie Lucas. You will not believe it. So I follow my instinct. And that time, the universe probably tell me, but don't say, go, go, go now. Because if I say hello to George Lucas, Katie wouldn't, when she walked by, she would not see me. So this chance will never happen. That's a real chance. But we did not know. We always think we're clever if I talk to him. If I talk to him, he never remember me. He comes sit here and say, I said, oh my God, I didn't say hello. I said, if I, then I start, so if I would be Star Wars, have a calligraphy, like a weapon, that would be dream come true. Like I would start, to, I was so nervous. He said, you're a great actors. I said, you know me? He said, Red Corner. I said, oh, I want to work with you, all of that. Then after I said, I left again. I was just so nervous. I said, why don't you just talk to him, right? So two weeks later, I was in uh, Maui uh, doing a panel for, for a festival. You know, when you got a job, your agent, your manager, all get on the phone. He said, Bailey, how the hell you got Star Wars? How the happened? They get made an offer. They didn't know, but I know. I said, what role, what role? He said, nobody know the script directly direct to your house. Tomorrow you go to Warner Brothers, try wardrobe. A week later, flew me to Australia shooting. He was waiting for me to take me to lunch, all of that. It, can you believe that experience? I'm just telling you, you have to follow. You think that's your chance, maybe you missed the real chance. It just be comfortable, trust yourself. If it's yours, it will be yours. Because the universe, when I was in the army, right, you play this little map, right, you put this and that. I think the universe, if there's a God, okay, Bailin, you go to um, Belfast, talking to you in the convention, you just go. You never know, so what chance? where it'll lead to you, but you're not doing things for the purpose of wanting something. You just enjoy the journey. So that's what I learned in life. So I so appreciate this moment to work together. Hopefully some of my story can inspire you to follow your heart, do what you love, regardless. I love that. My goodness, we so appreciate all the inspiration you've given us today. You are just fabulous. Please show your applause and love for Bai Ling. Thank you so much.